All right, guys. Hey, so we are back. We're gonna do a little round table discussion. Our table is kind of small, though. But okay. It's big it's enough. Round, no. It is round. <laughs> it's round, but, but it's small. But yeah, no, we're just gonna, you know, have our our thoughts and discussions on like different media that's going on right now. Uh, this is what, the beginning of June when we're yeah. talking about this. Yeah. Happy um, Pride. Yeah, and so we we wanted to we, recently the casting for. Fantastic Four is kind of like the big thing right now. Um, and just to run down, we have Adam Driver as Reed Richards. Mm. Margot Robbie is Sue Storm. Interesting. Uh, Paul Mescal is Johnny Storm. And we have David Diggs as The Thing. Ben Grimm. So... He the yeah. only actor of color is gonna be like well, in prosthetics <laughs> or cgi that's true we, we don't have a dr doom yet so we'll wait on that oh, although okay. i feel like fingers dr. crossed doom, but dr doom is like more at least canonically tied to like an eastern european <laughs> type of uh, Can we at least get aesthetic like... so i mean if they Rami had Malik. No. I, they probably had like more leeway to change up some stuff with with the, the thing the, the major casts but but um but hey if they want to make um dr doom like some some uh african dictator well, <laughs> you know there are well, indigenous people you know in every culture so maybe if they get someone kind of like that i'd understand it sure but yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, no, as far as the the major the the primary casting for the Fantastic Four, what do you guys what do you guys think? There 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 are a lot of kind of surprises in this casting. Um yeah, yeah. I think Adam Driver's good for um I can see him being re-reachers. I, yeah. That works really well. He, oh. he Yeah, he's good at like those kind of like just smart guy roles, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I can those see him. like kind of just intrinsically like, you know, not introverted, but like very introspective characters. Yeah. I think he's good at. Yeah. Yeah. And and Margot Robbie's cool because she's hot and yeah. <laughs> like I think no, she'll yeah, that's be a, fine. That's definitely um the most cookie cutter like expected yeah. <laughs> casting. Yeah. Like if you were to you know put money on that, you would have yeah. won. Are we a little disappointed that it's not John Krasinski and his wife though, and like Emily Blunt? That well, would have been cute. It would have been cool. It would have been cool. I think that the I mean realistically, I feel like I feel like the fandom kind of ran that dream into the ground, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Yeah, that's like, true. We don't want to fan service everything. I yeah, get that. I, I get that. Like it was it was a cool thought for a while there, and it would have been cool if they had announced this movie or if they had uh, announced the casting for this movie like two years ago. Yeah. But at this point it's like we we already had the the cameo in um Yeah Doctor, Doctor Strange. Strange. And then he was super disrespected and yeah. now, now he's gone we had that cameo already and then i feel like the the fandom kind of just kept hammering it and it was kind of a lot and then there was a moment where um emily blunt was kind of like talking about how she wasn't really very interested in playing superhero roles i didn't know, I didn't know that yeah and um, that was a few years ago and um well, the fandom her. was like um kind of going in on her for like not being on the whole like John Christensen, oh, I didn't know that. Blunt train with with everything, yeah. So I feel like I feel like it kind of just got kind of cringe like the whole okay. it needs to be john krasinski like he's the only one that could ever play this role is like okay come on like it would be cool it would be fun to have both of them be like husband and wife on and off screen yeah. but i don't know yeah no it's interesting okay then maybe they did their i think they did their thing yeah <laughs> but yeah, um yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know who's else who else was on the table for Sue Storm for a bit was Jodie Comer, who is if you guys who's saw that? Free Guy, she was like oh, the girl in that. Yeah, she's yeah, yeah. really cool. Like okay. she's really dependable in all her roles and I thought she was really charming in that film. So yeah, she's cool. I, I thought she would have been been cool in the role. Yeah. Um and I don't know if you guys know who Raul Coley is. He's like mm -hmm. a South Asian actor who's been in all of the like Mike Flanagan Netflix like horror series. He's mm -hmm. a really great actor and like people wanted him for um uh for Reed Richards. Oh. But he was like in a similar boat with like Emily Blunt. Even though he's like not a household name, he was like, I will never be in a Marvel movie. <laughs> Even though he's like a huge like Star Wars nerd and uh -huh, like he's like into uh -huh. video games, he's like, Yeah, I'm never gonna be in a Marvel Why not? Movie. I think he was just like against it on principle. Cause like like Emily Blunt, like, you know, maybe she, he just didn't want to be in like a comic book film, you mm -hmm. know? And that That's makes sense. 
Um, another surprise, I guess, is like Paul Mezcal as Johnny Storm. Um, I want to yeah. say it's a miscast just because he's like really done like only serious roles or like he's known for serious roles and johnny i don't know him at all personally yeah. like, i don't think i've ever seen anything yeah. with him in it. he's like an indie actor so it's like uh-huh. kind of interesting he's gonna be in the gladiator film he's gonna oh. be like i think commodus's son which oh, is like crazy <laughs> okay. right that's like another serious role and, like then he's gonna be johnny storm like who is like a hothead mm. literally and figuratively so uh, i'll be I'm intrigued. I don't know if I trust it yet, but hmm. I, you know, I hope he's good. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'll be that'll be interesting. Yeah, that's that's just like a uh, Johnny Storm right now is a huge question mark for me, just because I I don't know anything about him. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of just wait and see on that. Um, but yeah, you mean, Mar- you mean the character or oh, the the actor. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Margot Robbie as Sue Storm is very much like. Very typical. And then um, David Diggs as The Thing. Now, that was... Now, this is interesting <laughs> because it's, it feels like almost kind of the opposite of what you're talking about with um, with Paul Mescal. Yes. Where uh, yeah. David Diggs, I have only seen him in, like, comedic roles. Like, in, like, he's, like, a lighthearted, funny, jokey he's guy. Sebastian. He's always singing. Yeah, he's, like, he's Sebastian. always singing. He's from he's, Hamilton. He's from Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, 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 and so... Um, he like he'll sing and he he raps and he's just like yeah it's it's but then now he's like the most or one of the most yeah. if not the most tragic character in the Fantastic yeah, Four. Yeah, the thing is like super surly too, yeah, like all the time. Yeah, so it'll be that'll be that's oh, an interesting do one. Do you think they're trying to go for like a comedy aspect with the thing then? Uh, maybe, but I don't know. The it, maybe it's a a way for David Diggs to kind of like stretch his acting oh, okay, that's abilities. Fair. Um. And so it would be it would be interesting to see the the direction it goes. I'm not sure who's directing this movie. I can't remember. But um, Looking but yeah, up. that'll be that's something to look into. Yeah. Maybe they maybe they're gonna switch uh, Johnny Storm in the thing. I feel like I don't know. I trust when comedic actors are booked in serious roles. So I feel like comedic actors are like on a different level. I feel like if you were a good comedic person or actor, like your timing first yeah. of all is really good and yeah. And, and like I've seen that a lot more than I've seen serious actors do comedy. Yeah. I've seen comedy guys do serious, but comedy guys but serious guys doing comedy is like a little more Yeah. Because timing is a huge thing, you know? Yeah. That's the thing. And then I think even with comedy, the the elements of comedy, it is drama. It's just exaggerated yeah. drama. They say yeah, yeah. They say like comedy is like really just a fine line between like that and tragedy. Yeah, right? basically. Yeah. It is. That's why, uh, that's why, you know, Dante, the divine comedy is really just a huge tragedy. Dan, that, that's why it's so easy for like comedy writers to write like dramas. But yeah. then when I drama writers Hader. try to make silly, but yeah, yeah. it's a different story. Um, oh, okay. So the director of Fantastic Four is Matt Shackman. He did, he directed like WandaVision. All right. Yeah. Okay. His experience. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, but speaking about writing, I want to talk about the writer strike mainly because I actually went and support the writers on Thursday. Oh, you're picketing? Yeah, I was helping yeah. picketing. I brought like water bottles, whatnot. It was it was a very interesting experience. You know, I got to hear their story out, the experiences of what it's like to be a writer. Like a lot of times, they don't know when they're gonna get work. So imagine like you work on a show, like let's just say WandaVision. Imagine you wrote one episode of WandaVision. And it's like, that's nice. That's cool. But you don't know when you're going to be on another season. Because like that show, I don't think there's going to have another season. So it's like you're always trying to find work and whatnot, which is a struggle. Mm-hmm. But what's worse, and I think what kind of started to strike was that the studio, because the way a writer's room works, and I guess I have to tell the audience because, you know, there's more people watching. Generally in a writer's room, there's generally like a bunch of people. And they mainly have one, they have like people giving out ideas. And then they have like, maybe two or three people like actually writing the script. So what the studios want to do to save more money is just get rid of a bunch of people, have one person write the script and then have AI kind of proofread and give suggestions. The problem with that is that a lot of those experiences that people suggest are from personal experiences. So even if an AI was to take someone's, I don't know, take a video recording of somebody having like their life of being pregnant, it's still not the same as a writer because a writer would be able to articulate that in a writing sense and AI can't do that so it's just 
that's what's going on and that's why the writers right now are like okay we're not tolerating this we need a better union system we need a better thing to save our butts otherwise you know it's not going to work and with that going on a lot of writers are on strike you're seeing things like even the new spider-man 4 movie being held back because of the writer's spike you know even things like stranger things the new late new season is going to be hold back because of the strike so there are a lot of things holding back because of the strike so are it, they being delayed because the writers from those shows are on strike or are they just being delayed in support of the strike i think some i think stranger things in that context is support because i technically i think they're done with the story so they are just trying to support their writers but like as far as like uh, Spider-Man and even Deadpool, that is because the writers are like, we're not part of it. And they say you need like a writer on set too. That's another thing. Because they, you know, they're kind of like translating they do to- They do rewrites. They do rewrites and they're also All like that. translating to like whoever is like, I guess, directing like yeah. you know, what the ethos, pathos is in there, you know? Yeah, and that's another thing about writing. Writing is rewriting. You're always rewriting. You're always changing things. There's always, cause you know, even with shows, like, cause I met somebody who was like a producer on iCarly. They even say sometimes she writes a scene and then maybe Miranda Coswell is like, you know what? I don't think Carly would say that. So then they have to rewrite the whole thing and all that. So to have that be taken away, it's just, it's, it's, it's just not the same. Yeah. And and they why do they want to take that away though? I mean, it's cheaper. Again, yeah. I think there's like writers. a lot of companies are using the recession right now as an excuse to like cut back on things. Mm. Um, and I and it's like it's sad too because like I don't think writers were ever compensated for the new like revenue stream that streaming has brought yeah, to another, like that's companies. Thing. They were never like fairly compensated exactly. for the streaming boom, really. Yeah. Um, and and that sucks. But yeah, the fact that AI is another thing that's layered onto this is like so scary. Yeah. Um, AI is like not is affecting every industry. Mm. Like it's affecting my industry. I'm in marketing. It's affecting me. I know. Like even like there's been some speculation on like Pride Month. There's like a lot of like there's not a lot of like stuff that companies are doing for Pride Month right now, because I think I heard that like they're not really reaching out to like. LGBT community artists because a lot of them are using like AI already now mm. to like create that content and there's like less of it and it's not as like noticeable or good because AI is like really powerful right now for sure but it's not as like crazy or like robust as like it could be yeah it's good and bad but um but yeah it's like we're already kind of seeing like the effect of AI in so, all these industries and so in your job uh for the AI stuff affecting it it's is it mainly like ai art or is it like AI? yeah it's hitting creative stuff first for sure yeah. mm -hmm. but i mean like there are like learning tools there's like algorithms that are like making everything like more efficient but like you know there still needs to be like a human touch to like you oh, know yeah. look over things but eventually like that's gonna go away too because the more like especially like these ai writing tools you're feeding prompts into it right mm -hmm. but the more like prompts you put in and the more writing you put in the more powerful AI gets too, yeah. right? And that's like when like things will get really scary when it's like we're we're helping build this AI like whether we like it or not because we're, the more what we use it. Um, but yeah, it, and that's why that's why it's kind of like interesting, a little scary that like it could like take over like you know a lot of, of different jobs. But yeah, the creative industry is is getting hit first, unfortunately. Yeah. It's kind of ironic because I feel like <laughs> a lot of people expected it to, you know affect other industries yeah. like how i guess grocery stores yeah. the cashiers are being replaced by yeah. i mean that's not even ai that's just like mm -hmm. general machine mm. um or just technology but like self-driving also is expected to take over a lot of yeah. like, trucker jobs and stuff like that yeah. yeah um but like the first industry just so happens to be the creative industry which is like yeah what everyone thought would be safe i guess it's like i mean it's really powerful tools like if you just want like a really simple ad like you can do it in a matter of minutes whereas like you know like creative teams like they're like building that stuff and it needs like rounds of of like approval from clients and this yeah. this that whereas mm -hmm. like you know using ai it is a lot simpler i think it's like it's also gonna make like a lot of art it's gonna be like a vacuum like a lot of the art is gonna look the same it's gonna sound the yeah. same especially right out the gate like using ai um and like i hope that's like a problem that persists but i think the more that we use ai like the better it's gonna get so yeah mm -hmm. i don't know i mean i don't know i i, I personally think that a tool is a tool and the way we use yeah. it yeah 
is usually like what's gonna determine how it's perceived and right now yes ai is very much contested and like it, especially if you're a creative and an artist like you probably don't want it to like take over your job and take like essentially mm -hmm. clients away from you uh because it is probably easier for like say anybody who wants to create something who doesn't have the skill to create it um or the money like it's probably easier for them to use ai versus like to, to hire someone yeah yeah i think there's I think if we're like responsible, there could be like there's ethical ways to use AI. Like if everyone was really educated about it, like who knows? Maybe the artists are still going to use it in a way that's like we can't even like other people can't comprehend. Yeah, yeah. Right? I think that's the way <laughs> maybe to approach it. But I mean, there's other stuff too, like voice actors. Yeah. Because voice, like AI, like voice yeah. stuff is is so like imperceptible as far as like yeah. being real or not yeah you know like we're hearing all these like ai songs like there was like a frank ocean song that was yeah. released people were like literally in the comments arguing like no this is a real frank track like that line like only real frank Whoa. ocean like fans understand like that's such a unique frank line and like half people were like no this is ai it was ai and like <laughs> there are like voice actors which is like already like a really competitive um yeah. kind of job yeah, to begin exactly. with like you know a lot of voice actors are disrespected <laughs> because like you know they're giving it's like all crazy. the big voice roles it's to like yeah. recognizable actors yeah. what i is it? saw i saw a, i saw a video where um they had goku and naruto singing a weekend song oh my god exactly. <laughs> and it like it sounded like it too it was exactly like, like is... if if you can like just feed those lines into ai like that's it like we don't need exactly. we don't yeah. need a voice actor exactly. we don't need to book time in a studio pay all yeah. that money yeah. we don't need to wait for them to record it in their own home studio that maybe yeah. doesn't sound that good like when we could get super like uniform like stuff out of ai you know yeah yeah my, my only thing with that right now that's uh, holding it from going to that direction right now is just that um with voice acting because when i hear the ai like for example i was watching the ai where Naruto's talking to Pain, and it's supposed to be the whole. Uh, it's supposed to be the whole when you're supposed to talk about his hate speech, but they're you know they're just they're saying, oh, this is why your uh, why your show's better oh, yeah, than like, yeah, it's like, like arguing with arguing each other. Arguing each other I, like, I keep seeing the presidents arguing with each yeah, other, exactly, like Obama like and Trump and yeah, Clinton. The only thing is that <laughs> when they're even, like they're all like on Discord, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there's little things like tone and cadence and stuff like that that uh -huh. the AI cannot really do well and not yet not that's yet what of I'm course saying. that's the what I'm more saying the more that we use it <laughs> yeah. the better it's but gonna I, get but I that's... wouldn't imagine just like with the writers they might just have a voice director be like okay I want you to say it with this kind of cadence this kind of tone and then when they figure out those degrees yeah they could just have or you could type it into your little AI algorithm like hmm, maybe do this thing a little bit higher sound, pitch whatever. it I think yeah, it, yeah. it's yeah. gonna be a really powerful tune tool yeah. soon enough yeah I, I don't know I, I kind of feel excited about all of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, I know it's like bad for the industry in general because a lot of people who are those talents will get replaced by AI inevitably at some point. But I feel like the real talents will still, you know, find work and everything like that. Like the industry will jobs. survive and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think my whole approach with AI is like I see I see the fear of like loss of all of these different industries and like these different um, spaces that that are in, in existence now, but it might not be because of AI. But I feel like to have the mindset of of um, I feel like it's it's probably not the best strategy to have a mindset of oh let's like hold off on this for as long as possible i think that the better strategy would be to like look for the opportunity that is now possible because of ai and so i think that i i just i i feel like personally that that's a better way to look at it yeah, yeah. um just for like you know the future of yeah the, yeah and also as like possible, uh, possibilities of things yeah, yeah as a as a creator as creative people like having those tools like i'm not i'm not going to use somebody else's voice or whatever to, to do stuff but i'm gonna mm. use my own voice but whatever thing i cannot do like i feel like ai if i use it like in the right way i'm not gonna like use it in a way where i'm trying to copy other people or yeah. use that is known an voices issue, and all that yeah. stuff like, that is a legit issue is the yeah. fact that you could you could yeah steal stuff people's from voice. other people like yeah. other people's voice like imagine 
making money like there are people I, and it's it's real like people are just making money off of uh drake songs that are not drake songs yeah and and now this is like a real thing that people have to consider yeah um that there is actual ethical issues yeah that go into um that go into something like this but it's and not then, even something as big as just like like drake we recognize right mm -hmm. the all the ai art is like derived from, from other people. real art that yeah. people have made right yeah. and like all the and it's weird voice... because it's not even the same thing as like oh, oh, a human being will take inspiration yeah mm -hmm. from art or uh, from stuff that they've seen but they'll use that inspiration to create something um from themselves but like this is like literally taking other pieces of art mm. to create it's it's just like it's a weird thing that that happens where we're interacting with this non-human uh entity and it's it's just legitimately taking other yeah. things to create you can't say it's, it's inspiration like, because it's literally taking these things yeah. and everything is going to be derivative of real art mm. yeah but it's like not i mean it's not there's no consent in that you know yeah. like even like like you said like musicians are getting sued for like writing a song that like maybe sounds like a song from like the 70s yeah, or yeah Ed there is no regulation yeah yeah on AI yet so yeah. right my my main worry so like I can definitely see a future with especially with art working with AI like I think that would be the best thing right because even for me who struggles sometimes with my grammar now I have an AI thing that can help me with that so I think that's very helpful my biggest worry is like again like that respect in terms of like with the writer's room where it's like you know those ideas where it's like it'd be a lot more funnier if you had somebody again a pregnant mom talk about her actual experience versus yeah. like some ai talking about oh this mom from blah 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 her pregnant experience and try to have a writer feed that so yeah. my worry is that and then another worry i have is just like pranks because they can get worse now especially pranks. if you're older like imagine for example you have a let's just say you have a kid and then you're you're somebody wants to prank your father or scam scam them exactly <laughs> and say like oh i have it's like hey daddy i need xyz amount of money to blah 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 yeah. blah 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 like that can get really worse with ais because ais can mimic the voice and everything so your parents might fall for it and stuff like that so okay i think yeah. that's the other oh, the terminator is here <laughs> yeah i i guess for me i just <laughs> i just like the idea of having more tools for creators who who just want to do their own thing but like don't have the resources to do it um mm -hmm. but that's it like yeah I, I i understand the ethical side of things i understand like the industry being hit by it and like in general like the whole issue behind it and how it can make things worse but at the same time i do feel like it it can give like individuals who really want to do certain things in an ethical way like Mm. more power to do that yeah i think if they just get better policing with ai then i can definitely be well i'm on board but like more on board with it if they just have better police yeah. regular regulations you know yeah yeah because mm. if you're like a, a solo writer who can't hire an editor yeah like, and ai can essentially help you proofread and stuff like that yeah that's pretty helpful you know? i agree um there's just a lot of ways you can use it that can help you Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if it can edit my video and make it look like how I would have edited it, right. yo, I'm I'm all for that. If like, it can true. edit videos, then yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I think I think I mean I'm pretty sure we we're getting there. I exactly, think are, exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, there was um I saw an ad. I think um Adobe is actually uh, like if it's not already created, it's being created, where you could literally just have it um auto edit a video dude i, I mean i'd love to there, there's already features right now where it's like for what's it called you know how they have those words on the screen it kind of already Caption. does that yeah and all you have to do is fix it a little bit like sometimes it's slightly off so it's like 90 oh yeah yeah tiktok has that yeah. so it does it that already like, does so that's already uh auto captions yeah, yeah. auto captions yeah, that's that's like that's not even ai that's what i'm talking about is like imagine i put all my video ass all the video assets we have right now yeah three cameras all the audio yeah and then it just does it for us i know and then it's, it's done like that would be amazing it would be i i would not have to spend like two three hours doing it, everything it, and... it would be worth the money whatever <laughs> <laughs> exactly so yeah. that's what i'm excited yeah. for i'm excited for the things that will like save me time mm. and and like just make my life easier as a creator that's yeah. all mm -hmm yeah that. even um th there was one that i saw that even uh, it helps with uh b-roll 
Mm. Like it creates B roll for the for the video. It's just like yeah. Yeah, just imagine yeah. like we're talking about stuff and then like like the actors or something and yeah. then stuff they, pops up. Yeah, yeah. It, it pops up. Yeah. Like that'd be amazing. We don't have to like sift through the internet for a good photo of them and yeah. and then add it. I mean, I it, I make it sound like I don't want to do any work, but yeah. I've edited for like the past 5 Absolutely. years and editing can it, get it, very it can tedious. Annoying. Yeah. I I think the only thing is like it goes back to the creative aspect cuz maybe for example if you want a particular shot then you want to be a little picky and choosy but besides that for especially with us it's like we just want to put something out there so if you want to put something out there it's yeah. easy to just yeah ai picks this shot whatever mm -hmm. yeah so i think it really just depends on that aspect but yeah well, yeah that's what that's why i'm excited yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah a lot to live but yeah i i i know none of you guys uh going back to like uh tv and and, and film and stuff i know none of you guys watch uh succession but that recently had its uh, series finale, um, uh, Succession show on HBO Max, um, not HBO Max. Well, now it's just Max. Now it's just Max. Oh, um, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it was probably the best way that it could have ended. I'm not the best Succession fan, just because, you know, I, that whole show ultimately it's just like rich people doing rich people stuff and it's weird because like there are very limited stakes when everybody can just go off into the sunset and like just be rich by themselves <laughs> like literally all the problems that they solve all the all the problems that they have could be solved by them like hey i i'm gonna dip and just be rich really? by myself like so everybody it's is not rich. i thought it's isn't it in personal problems like they just have problems with each other in terms of like how they feel and all that kind of stuff all of their problems are based on who's gonna take control of daddy's company yeah and so it's yeah like they're the, all the personal stuff gets in there but realistically any one of them can just be like hey i'm rich already and i'll always be rich so I don't need to be like I don't need to be in this like backstabbing so like betrayal like and like secrets and lacks a sense of realism and well, I mean, it's, I think it's, okay, 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 it's, yeah, it's it's yeah. tricky because it's relative, right? Because again, yes. we're poor, yeah. right? So for us, <laughs> we will we will look at what no, I mean that yeah, in a yeah, serious no, no, sense. No, no, it's no, like no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for us, we will look at it from a, a lens of like, oh man, you can just leave. But for them, it's different. Like for them, they've always grew up like that. Yeah, so for them, Which, it's like it's the reason they are <laughs> uber rich. Like you know, being able to always be like, I want more, I want more. Yeah, like, that's no, the reason. That's the interesting thing is that like at least with this show, it's like they they all have that like desire to be like uber rich, but that's definitely not the reason why they're rich because like their their dad, yeah, like he's the kind of guy like in the the writing of the the show yeah. who like got it out the mud. He like mm -hmm. started from like the bottom the bottom, and so now he's like created this empire. Um, and he has these kids who all are ambitious, but they all have like their own unique flaws that make them unable to like really be the right fit to to take over from from their father. So essentially what I'm hearing, because I always like to look at things from the philosophical standpoint, it's like old money versus new money. So the example that old money, it's like hardworking effort, all this stuff. New money is like they believe they deserve that. no actually you know what it's 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 maybe the opposite because i think the thing about old money is old money is old money because they're able to effectively um stay rich for generations after generations yeah. and so that's why it's old money um because like not only is like the son rich but like their great great grandfather was also rich so but with new money it's like you have maybe one or two generations where they're rich, but because they can't really effectively um, transfer the that well, um, whatever sustain it, yeah. um, whatever characteristics or traits um, cause them to have that wealth, it kind of over generations they they can probably lose out. So I I'll, think that's old money versus new. I money. guess when I heard that you said their dad was the first one who caught them rich, yeah, that's so why I, think I was his thinking his dad is actually new money. Okay, that makes sense. Because he he was rich, yeah, that's what I was but he was unable to effectively um, transfer like the positive characteristics that he had to his children that would allow them to sustain their riches for generations. Yeah. So like his kids are still gonna be rich for for their entire lives, but I doubt that their their great grandkids will be rich. Okay. Yeah. I see. 
so um yeah i but the i think that the show um it's very it's very much like a shakespearean mm. type of influence they have like king lear as a as so a are you recommending this show or? no <laughs> 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 the thing about the thing about the show, it's like it's interesting enough to watch, but I personally can't like really recommend it just because um it's it's hard to 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 verbalize, but I it, it's it's very well written. Like the the uh, the writing in the shows is done very well. It's very witty. There's a lot of really funny moments mm. in the show. Uh, like Tom and Greg are two characters that are just like, uh, when they're together, it's like comedic relief and it's like amazing. Um, and so there's there's a lot of funny stuff. But I think just um, the the whole essence of the show and like the 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 major driving force of the show is just not something that. Um, I think is all that interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, but I watched it the whole See, time. that's the thing. You're making me want to watch it, even though you're telling me not to watch it. I mean, hey, if you, if you, if you end up watching it, then, you know, kudos. But um, but yeah, that's that's just my honest take okay. on it. Yeah. Uh, I, it, it's so, I, I enjoyed watching it, but I wouldn't feel the need to tell other people to watch it. Okay. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Were you satisfied with the way it ended? I think after thinking about it, it probably ended the best way that it probably could have. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm not going to spoil it just in case you guys want to watch it. Um, but uh, the characteristics and the flaws of all the kids um, just kind of fed into the finale. Okay. And it, it just it made sense. That's good. That's all you yeah. can ask for. Dang, you should have said the end with them going being poor. <laughs> as far as like, you know what? Screw you all. <laughs> You're all the money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess I won't watch that. <laughs> yeah, I'm never going to watch it now. <laughs> I don't know. That's me. I, but like, I'm, I mean, everybody loves the show. Everybody who watches the show yeah. like, online. I knew a lot like, of writers who were telling me, oh, Secession's one of my favorite shows. Yeah, like, like uh, everybody loves this <laughs> show. So I'm not like a voice for the majority of people here. Yeah. Like, that's, that's okay. I'm a, I'm a voice for myself. <laughs> um, but I, like, Yeah, I watched like the first episode. Uh -huh. And then I, I can see how like it's kind of like exactly what you're saying. Like the dialogue is great. But like yeah. the overarching thing, it's like. I can't really ever see myself in like a situation like that. I'm like, when I don't see myself in stories or like, I can't like self insert, I'm like, I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> like, Dang. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's that I can't see myself in the situation. I think it's just that I, I maybe I just like legitimately don't care <laughs> that much okay. about their situation. Yeah, I agree. I feel yeah. like conflict is like one the driver of story. So if you don't really care about the conflict, it's like, then you don't really want to watch it. Did you like ever really like root for any of them? That's the thing. You didn't No, because you exactly. can't. Like, oh, okay. And but like there are people who love the show who like will root for different characters. Like, yeah, oh, I want like, uh Shift to win. Yeah, or, I want yeah. Kendall to win or I want Rome to win. But like they all suck. <laughs> <laughs> like they're none of these people are good people. And it feels weird because it seems like there's an element of the fandom that is willing to overlook some of these like major flaws in these characters that like realistically from a writing perspective i don't think that they intend for you to root for any one of them um but then as, as fans you know they they run yeah. away with it i've seen the same argument like online yeah. it's like we're not even supposed to root for any of them but like <laughs> yeah. you know some people are like oh like shiv like queen you know like don't be yeah, sexist she's, all that she's but not a, she's not a good not. do like, they do a good job of you empathizing with those characters yeah okay yeah they uh, they they do a good job of getting you to feel for these characters like um you understand why they're messed up um because like yeah if a character like shiv like she's the daughter and she's like this um woman in this male dominated field and so she has um and she grew up with this you know um overbearing father who's like very strong-willed and so the way that she acts and behaves 
um you understand it and you feel for it and then when she like does something that blows up in her face it's like you feel bad for her but at the same time it's like you cause this mm. to happen to yourself and it's like um and so yeah the show does a very good job of of having all those things like with um kendall he he's the quote unquote oldest he's not really the oldest but he acts like it and um his the way that he like you understand his motivations with the way that he he interacts with his father and he, he does everything to try to like make his father you know proud of him or like to have have that like fulfillment with him and it kind of just doesn't work out mm. um so yeah it's just like you you understand you can feel and you feel for and empathize with all these characters so yeah they do a good job on that front for sure yeah, speaking of like shows where everybody sucks and <laughs> they're messed up, um, I just finished Beef, the limited series oh, on yeah. Netflix. Yeah. It's only one season, and I love a limited series. I just can't, you, you guys know I have like a hard time keeping up with shows because sometimes I'm like, I don't know if I can see like three seasons of like this persisting problem. Like mm. I just like need mm. something a little more yeah. like tightly wrapped up, you know? Mm. And Beef was that for me. I love a limited series. We saw like Queen's Gambit was another example yeah. of a great limited series. Limited means it's just done after the first season. Well, they, they, Sometimes it, it's like maybe one or two. Or maybe or it's focusing on different stories. So I feel like the next, if they do a season two of Beef, it may just be with different characters. Mm, okay. Yeah, maybe. I'll have to look up the definition. But yeah, it was yeah. like, it's only one season with like these characters. Um, did anybody else watch it? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Did you watch it? No. <laughs> did you finish it? I'm, I'm always I finished it. it. Yeah, I'm I just finished the one that it. Literally <laughs> um, I really enjoyed it. I think if like, especially if you're like Asian American. Oh, like, yeah. It's, it's, definitely, <laughs> it's definitely. It's like kind of a treat to like, you yeah. know, see yourself represented and like. Ali see... Wong did such a good job. Yeah. She did such a good it's, job. And this is another example of, I'm saying like, I'm, I mean it, like comedic actors, people yeah. with comedic yeah, talent. Exactly. Yeah. Comedy tragedy are, are just so yeah. closely intertwined that when they get into a serious role, it's just like the timing is there. Everything is there. And like, yeah. it is really, it's great writing. Mm. It is definitely a, like a performance driven. Yeah. You know, the interesting thing about that show piece of media. was the, the I don't know if um, you picked up on it, but like the depiction of church. Oh, yes. It was very interesting. It's like, very accurate. I don't know if I've seen like a, a, a depiction of church in in the, like the way that it was done in that show in recent media like that at all. I'm curious because the show is really like OC, Irvine, yeah. all that stuff. So it really is like accurate to those kinds of to areas. the area that like, literally literally <laughs> like, things like that. Like it's too it's scarily accurate. But uh yeah, but they yeah, they depict church really well. I agree with you. Like yeah. it's really how they got in everything. To me and what I, I really like, liked about the show for uh -huh. me was that at later on, especially the later seasons, because the stakes get higher and higher, it mm -hmm. felt like breaking bad. Like it felt like, oh yeah. man, these are gonna these people are gonna attack them. Show about so basically the summary of the show is these two people who have beef with each other and it starts off with like you know it starts so, off with a road one rage. One incident of road incident. rage. And then they, and they become let, obsessed with each they other. They become obsessed, they wouldn't let it go, and then yeah, things just start to, to like, escalate and it's like they kind of prank each other and then Interesting. And it's just be it's just become it gets to like these ridiculous levels near yeah. the end. Yeah. It's it's a dramedy. So a lot of it is humor, but then yeah. there's tragedy because it's you know Which are the best comedies yeah. because like again, comedy tragedy. <laughs> yeah. Well I want you to expand on like what what about the church scene was like more oh, yeah. accurate. I was like so like when it started, I was kind of expecting because like the typical trope I love whenever uh church people is kind of brought up in in media recently is like it's kind of there for like a joke purpose or like somebody's a pedophile like that's usually the reason why they they bring it up and so i was low-key waiting for the the foot to drop of like oh when are we gonna like laugh at these people but it kind of just never happened it ca it was kind of just like a backdrop and the the character like there was there were characters in there who were messed up but it wasn't laughing or yeah or looking down on yeah exactly they the, look down on the, it the, the people like it wasn't looking down on the church people yeah, it was exactly. looking down on like those specific characters and i think that was done very well and i i, I just i i picked up on it because i low-key i just haven't seen that in recent media yeah. i agree very i think much. that's one of like the most like talked about performances too is like steven yun in the church like breaking yeah. down like, yeah really exactly. crying like crazy exactly i think it's a i think it's a good depiction of church i mean like i don't know 
a lot of people our age that will like go to church on their own anymore i know like christianity mm. is like huge and like korean culture for sure yeah but i do th i do think it was done very well because it's like when you're in the moment like when you're in those like you know group things for like praise and stuff like you definitely feel really good and you feel like close to god um but it's like you know once you're outside of church like you know it doesn't make all those like characteristics and like some people go away and then and, like you said it's like more of like a backdrop of a thing because mm -hmm. like once you get into the real world all that stuff that's like affecting you is like still gonna like come back like full force mm -hmm. Which, but it is cool that there they did have that one moment of like just pure like you know it was it was, it was really like a pure moment yeah. for a second yeah mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah but yeah, yeah um, good show good show yeah. the way that it ended it, too yeah i i was really kind of i was really happy with the way that it ended yeah, yeah i was gonna say a really good ending for it um mm. a24 is really great there's like i love when things are like surreal right mm. like, oh I yeah like, i loved everything everywhere yep. there was like some surreal moments where yeah. i was like what is this yeah, I'm like, me too. <laughs> That's, what a treat like i can't believe they like just like added this little thing in yeah, here yeah exactly um that like just makes it unique right yeah. like some things where i'm like i can't imagine the show without this little part right here because it like makes it so like yeah. outrageous and surreal and like i love it there's at least like two instances where i'm like there's no way that this is happening yeah i agree <laughs> yeah and like it, it just kind of like is gonna make the series like really stick with me and that, that's the beauty yeah. part with dramedies because with comedy you can add that surrealness and it really plays with the story versus if it's a drama and you have the surrealness it has mm -hmm. to like oh maybe it's just because it's supernatural and that was that. another thing is like and i don't know um like i'm obviously i'm not korean i'm not uh chinese but the level of authenticity in this show i i got it with uh, going back to the church stuff like i knew the songs that they were singing <laughs> like i knew those songs i'm like yo <laughs> So, so if if I was able to like catch that authenticity um, in that level, I can't imagine like the level of authenticity when it comes to like Korean culture and Chinese culture yeah, yeah. that is there, layered in that it show. It's really authentic. There yeah. is two. There's this. They deal with a lot of stuff, right? Uh -huh. With like being a children of immigrants, yeah, like right, right. being um, being held back by like literal like you know capitalism. Family. Like oh, they yeah. they tackle like. Um, classism yeah right they tackle even like within like asia and southeast asia there's yeah. like this unspoken like tier of like elitism where it's like mm. if you're japanese you're like kind of at the top right yeah. and then once you're getting more Which into like the Jap rich japanese <laughs> exactly yeah exactly. and like once you get into like southeast asia like obviously those are more like not well off communities at all and they mm. were like all imperialized by japan so like there's that there's always going to be that dynamic between right. those asians but then also you have this extra layer of like obviously like white people are at the top in america right mm. so like you have like the ceo who's like a white woman she's like always going to have this power over like amy True. and like really everyone else and even like joji who's like they're yeah. well off too like even though they're like yeah, you know yeah, yeah. but he's like japanese and like an artist and like just having those like little layers of like classism elitism like that was that like kind of really just feeds into the overall story. yes that was like really cool to see those dynamics because mm. it's like this just like fundamental differences like you know it's like cool to say like yeah like at the very end like kind of there's a message of like yeah you know maybe we're the same but there's also like people that are just like so so different mm. you know like there are some people you'll never be able to like level with that will like never understand you and like I don't know, like kind of at the end, I felt like maybe that's like, okay, you know, yeah. like it's just, it's just an interesting thing that they like, oh, that they did. Sounds yeah. like a good recommendation. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely watch that it. before you watch Succession. <laughs> or don't even watch Succession. <laughs> watch Succession. <laughs> at least it's, Beef is like what, like 12, 10 episodes? 10 episodes. 10 episodes. The last three were like so good and yeah, yeah. No, it was good. All right. The music too was like really good. There was like a really good Bjork song in the second to last episode, <laughs> and they ended with this Smashing Pumpkins song that was super emo. I was like, yeah, hell yeah. They really do. It's like I feel like it's that they do that Netflix trope. Well, I call it Netflix trope where the cliffhangers are really addicting. You want to see the next episode because like yeah. that's how I felt. Yeah, a twenty four x Netflix. Great collab. Great. <laughs> they killed it. They did. They did a good, great job. Yeah. Yeah, I recently finished Better Call Saul. Finally, yes, oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> great, great show, great show, man. That whole Breaking Bad universe—it's you know one of the best things it is. on TV. It, it is. Had. 
be nice. I, I, I would talk, but I feel like I'll talk an hour about her. <laughs> so, I kind of don't want to talk too much. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not, I, like, made me, I'm rewatching Better or Breaking Bad right now. Like, after finishing Better Call Saul. And so, it's just, like, it's so cool just having that. So, honest opinion, just a little quick thought. Do you feel like, because I was, especially seeing the ending of uh, Better Call Saul, do you feel like you have to watch Breaking Bad to get to that ending point? Yes. Yes, because there's so you many things because, that And you have to watch up. it before Better Call Saul. Like, the, the thing about it is, like, Better Call Saul is the prequel, but... At the end, it the becomes a sequel. That, yeah, it becomes at, a sequel yeah, at the yeah, end. Yeah, at the end, it becomes a sequel, <laughs> and it ties in all these yeah. um, other aspects of, of Breaking Bad. So realistically, you have to watch Breaking Bad before watching Better Call well, Saul. Well, technically, you could just actually watch Better Call Saul until episode, I don't know, I think it's like 6, 10. Okay, and then after 6, 10, <laughs> then you can watch Breaking Bad. And then and you then go watch you it. Go back Because now it's all the whole story. Yeah, it kind of did the <laughs> the whole um, the thing that Clone Wars um, that Clone Wars did with um, Episode Three of Star Wars, um, where they kind of like tied it in together. Where it was like this is kind of what's happening in the background of the events that are happening in Star Wars. Yeah, um, Revenge yeah. of the Sith and yeah. stuff like that. So so. Yeah. Sounds really interesting. Maybe yeah. I should watch those things. You haven't seen Breaking Bad? No. Oh, oh my god. Have you, Scott? I have. Yeah. Uh, Even Scott has seen Breaking Bad. Scott has seen Breaking Bad. Just love Breaking Bad. Exactly. Maybe I'll watch that was it. literally my favorite it's show before show. Game of Thrones. Yeah. And now I don't know if it's better back call to hmm? Breaking Bad. I don't know. Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul are, are up there. Yeah. Um yeah, Chuku thinks that Better Call Saul is better. Right? Than Breaking Bad? Yes. Yeah. But it's just because I'm looking at every aspect. Cause, and it, to be fair, it's it came after. So there's a lot of things. Like the that directing's a little bit better. The style's a little bit better. There's a lot of like creative episodes. Yeah. So overall, I think it's better overall. I mean, if we're just caught story-wise, that's a little bit uh, debatable. But overall, if we're looking at aesthetic and everything, I think Better Call Saul is a better I'm aesthetic. Like, I'm curious because like rewatching Breaking Bad, I remember that Breaking Bad started on AMC and like, I don't know like what the rules are for like nudity and profanity, but like they have nudity and profanity yeah. in Breaking Bad yeah. a lot. Was it just on AMC like It that? was on AMC. I don't I, know if it was on it like that, but. Did they, did they have it the same way? Because I don't, I feel like I don't remember like, I mean, I don't know. I feel like the rules with like Wait, AMC has had some like crazy shows on there though have they just yeah, like full Mad on Mad Men was nudity? kind of a lot of like, was it and like death, the F, like, F yeah the F bombs like, yeah yeah there's a lot of F bombs on AMC yeah on AMC yeah <laughs> okay I mean maybe I just don't remember you said racist <laughs> yeah and Mad Men <laughs> yeah, oh and yeah, like yeah. think of um the Walking Dead yeah Walking Dead a ton of violence at least yeah. yeah but I mean I feel like they're they're like really specific about like no f bombs on TV. Like I think they say at least a couple, and I've seen in Walking <laughs> Dead say at least once or so. Fucking um, Carl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I mean. Know. Yeah. I feel like the. I feel. Yeah. Okay. And it's not a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna watch now. <laughs> <laughs> For the f bombs. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. But yeah. Any other uh, pressing topics or issues oh man yeah i think i think that was the yeah, most was important stuff yeah <laughs> that i think that's good. pretty good for sure for sure we'll regroup uh once we see all the other movies that are coming out yeah near flash the end of the year soon, flash man. barbie oppenheimer, barbie and oppenheimer. Ooh, yeah blue beetle blue beetle, blue beetle. Yep. Well, we'll see <laughs> a lot of exciting stuff hopefully most of it is oh, good mission impossible Yo, yeah yeah <laughs> all right all right well definitely let us know your thoughts on anything that we talked about in the comments below anything that you want us to talk about you can also put that down in the comments below and we will catch you later peace peace, peace.